Yo, what is going on guys? The Great King 22 here, back with another uh, WWE review reaction type video of another pay-per-view PLE event. Last time we was watching WrestleMania. This time we have WWE Backlash. Now I have to say, going into this, on paper, I thought this was going to be awful. But, it turned out to be very good. Let me do the view. There we go. It turned out to be very good. Uh, also, I just want to give a shout out to the MVP of the entire event, the crowd. Like, oh my gosh. Just starting from the opening bell to the final of the final match. Ev they, the crowd was invested in every match. They was cheering, booing, chanting, everything. It was insane. The energy was insane. And that, the crowd itself made the event so much better. Because I know if this exact pay-per-view happened in the uh, COVID no fan era, this would have flunked and shit the bed. 100%. Anyways, let's get into it. I want to try and go in order, I think. So let's start off with the opening match. Bianca Belair versus Io Sky. Now, this was a... I will say this was a great match. What made me like it the, more, the most about it was... How into it the fans were. They were so behind Io... And so anti Bianca, even though Friday Night Smackdown, Puerto Rico was chanting or cheering on Bianca. I don't know what happened in the span of a single day, but a single day happened, and all of a sudden, EO chants, EO Sky chants, every time EO hits a big move or does a move there's a huge pop every time uh, Bianca does a move there's a massive boo it reminded me very much of the uh, I forget which event it was but it was, I think it was the WWE Championship or something like that it was the match between John Cena and RVD when Cena was the baby face and in very hostile territory it was very reminiscent of that and yeah like I was saying it was a great match and, um, at some point, like, midway through towards the end or whatever, uh, Bianca botched, so, like, whatever it was, because she, she, like, was doing the, like, the, work in the arm, and then she did the power press or whatever, and then did it with one arm, dropped Io right on her face. Like, I wanted Io to win to begin with, but after that happened, I was like, alright, Let's change titles. Let's do an upset. Massive upset. Literally a win away from being the longest reign champion. Let's upset it. Let's upset that. I would have loved that to happen. But it didn't. Because in our time, day and age, every new WWE champion is the next longest reigning WWE champion. Or at least that's what they're pushing it to be, so... Yeah. Uh, let me see. The ending finish... Damage control came out. And it was looking like he was going to win. But, looks like they were also telling a story of maybe like... A separation between EO and damage control. Showing how like, Bailey was like, holding the braids and she got caught and it delayed the move. And that's what cost her the match. I don't know. I think that's what they're probably setting up towards in terms of story. Um, i trying to think what else. Yeah, I don't know. EO probably should have won. It would have been even better if she won clean. But I, I understand where they're going with the story. Between them breaking up. I also heard a rumor about someone from NXT joining uh, 
damage control and it would make more sense if they joined damage control to fill the hole of EO Sky than just randomly joining damage control because the rumors was joining damage control to fill the hole of Bailey but I think they're bugging hard anyways I believe the next match was Seth versus Omos and let me just say that the uh, this was the best Omos match of his entire career but I don't know if I give the credit to Omos right hear me out I don't think this match happens the way it happens with Omos getting put over the way he's getting put over without Seth in the ring doing it right they could have just did a stomp and ended it instead they did two stomps made him kick out did a stomp and he blocked a stomp just using his power like that's putting Omos over that's not actually Omos doing it that's Seth putting him over doing like the super stomp from the top rope getting tossed around the ring so like super selling doing flips oh like overselling almost almost but not really just almost that overselling but not quite I don't know it was a really good match for what I was expecting it to be because I had no expectations no hype going into this at all because we had one confront one face-to-face -face confrontation because the match came literally out of nowhere anyways I enjoyed it it was a fun match and I didn't expect to enjoy it but I did but Seth freaking Rollins won I will say I didn't do a predictions video because I didn't expect to like backlash but my predictions the only one I got wrong was the uh, six-man tag match I thought I didn't know I didn't think bloodline was gonna win but we'll get to it the next match was it the triple threat or was it the Zelina Rhea I don't remember I think it was the triple threat anyways I thought the triple threat was cool but it was a lot of um, a lot of planned sequences right a lot of Bronson hit theory into a Bobby hit Bronson or vice versa or a theory hit Bobby into a Bronson hit theory like a lot of those types of like three piece sequences that oh he hits the move he hits the move on the person who hit the move and then like yada 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 but I actually enjoyed the ending of the match right he's a little slimy little sneaky snake Austin Theory picked up the win I think the ending sequence was Austin Theory was on the mat and Bronson Reed was going up for a what's it even called like a moonsault whatever it is going for that missed into a Bobby Lashley a beautiful spear like a really good spear Just hit it and then as soon as he hit the spear Austin Theory popped up and grabbed the back of Bobby's head and threw him outside the ring and rolled him out into a quick little sneaky pin one two three and he rolled out the ring with Bobby rushing in Just mad that's good booking right there that's keeping the title on your sneaky snake <laughs> little chicken shit heel and that's just setting up more Bobby verse theory uh, yeah I enjoyed it I enjoyed the entire card my most the match I was disappointed the most in was the six man we'll get to it in a second uh, Rhea versus Zelina Vega we all we all knew Rhea was gonna win no chance in hell Rhea did a good job of making it look like there was a chance no chance in hell Rhea 
kind of dominated Z Zelina the whole time, with and then allowed some some flashes and some moments for Zelina to get pops in the crowd because it's her home crowd. She they were super behind her. Yeah, because uh, I know her like they said her like her family was there and they mentioned the story about like her dad passing away in the 9/11 attacks. I thought, damn. Dedicating this loss <laughs> to your passed away dad, your father, from a terrorist attack? Wow, that's um, it's a bold move, Cotton, right? Because they mentioned that before the match even started, I was like, because I knew she's going to lose. I'm like, damn, why would you do that? <laughs> why? <laughs> I, I understand, but like, it was a little off. Anyways, let's see. Yeah, I liked it. It was a nice dominant performance by Rhea. And starting her dominant reign, right? Damn, I wish Bianca would have lost, though. I really did. I really would have liked Bianca to lose there. And just seen what happened. Anyways, the next match was, in my opinion, maybe the... Could have been the main event. But we had Damian Priest versus Bad Bunny. And I will say this was a fantastic match. Bad Bunny showed out and showed off. And they made it all believable too. They didn't make it to where Bad Bunny's beating the shit out of Damian Priest wrestling in a wrestling ring right that's not believable at all because he's a music artist so they made it believable it was dominant they started the match with like it would have ended very quickly if priest didn't just pick up his head after he hit the south of heaven i think <laughs> but he just wanted to keep toying with him and yeah there was a crazy spot of uh where they made it out into the crowd over at the uh, mechanical area. And they put them up on top of some big boxes. And I, I, I it was like a falcon arrow. Like some kind of arrow move or whatever it is. Damian Priest put Bad Bunny through, through a bunch of tables. That was covered in like a black cloth or whatever. But that was an insane spot. And, uh, yeah, obviously the crowd was behind, uh, Bad Bunny heavily, especially his entrance. They were singing his, uh, song, and it was so loud. Anyways, we get back, and then I know Judgment Day comes out, starts beating up on, uh, Bad Bunny. Then Rey Mysterio comes out and then gets jumped by uh, Judgment Day as well because he's he alone's not enough then this is like the big surprise right Carlito he said I spit in the face of people who don't to be cool he comes out huge pop people are going crazy he actually looks good too I don't know about the little goatee beard it looks a little weird but he looks good and uh yeah Beating him up, ended up taking the apple and spitting in the face of people who don't want to be cool. Or people who aren't cool, aka Dominic Mysterio, he spit the apple in Dom's face. That got a pop, right? That was great. And then they started uh, pressuring Judgment Day out. And then I forget the other one guy's name. I can't think of it, but he came out, and Morel W.O. came out, and they jumped Judgment Day. It was, it was just nice seeing, like, like five or six guys just jumping Dom, just stomping away at him. That was great and entertaining. Anyways, we go back into the match. They've been working a Priest's leg to make it believable, like... Did like a hyper extension drop leg breaker or whatever, and 
hitting him with hitting him in the leg with the kendo, hitting him in the leg with on the steel post, hitting him in the leg with a chair. Working Priest's leg, so and he's been he was selling like a motherfucker too. Priest was selling his leg away. It was great. But yeah. Uh Priest suckers him in, kicks him in the face. He's gonna start hitting him with a chair, then gets low blowed, a legal low blow by Buddy. And he hits the um I don't remember what it's called, but it's a I don't know, a sunset pile driver type of hurricanrana flip, something. I don't know. The bunny destroyer, something like that. He hits that one, two, three, it's the end of the match, and it was great. Crowd loves it, they're super hype. And like you do if you finish that and you think, man, that's gonna be hard to top. It was difficult to top. And the next match being the three way tag match between KO Sammy and Riddle versus Usos and Solo. I would say the match itself, like the wrestling part of the match, didn't hold up to the hype of the Priest Bunny. It wasn't bad, right? It was disappointing compared to what you expect, right? Like, you can see that was a better match than Seth and Omos, right? But I didn't have any expectations for Seth, Seth and Omos, so I wasn't disappointed, right? I didn't have too many expectations for this match because I know, like, it's, it's hard to top that WrestleMania performance. But still, I had something, a better ex expectations than Seth and Omos. Just an Omos match, period. So, I was a bit disappointed on the match itself, the wrestling-wise. I know Riddle had, a, like, a nice sequence. Like a run, like forearm, forearm of the Usos. Like forearm, 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 forearm. Suplex, suplex. Just a jumping swanton on both of them. Out the ring. Kick the solo. A moonsault type flip or whatever. Crazy offense on Riddle on that like whole sequence. Like he popped off when he got that hot tag. Uh, but the rest, I would say the wrestling itself wasn't the main focus of the match, right? The main focus was the story of the bloodline. Now that's why I say like I didn't get the prediction right. I thought bloodline was going to lose. Like one of the Usos getting pinned. And I was thinking maybe a solo turn. But, they didn't do the full turn yet. But they did some real, like, tension. So, here's how it kind of went down, right? So we had... So, like, towards the end, you had Jay, like, a... Uh, Solo tagged himself in. Bam, smacked, smacked Jay in the chest. Jay wasn't happy with that. So as soon as uh, Solo went in, Jay went out. Jay immediately just smacked Solo in the chest, tagged himself right back in. And the tension's rising. You're like, oh, oh, right? The tension's rising. It's about the story, not the wrestling. So you have that. And it gets to the point where... Solo's like looking down at the people. I think it's Sammy on one side, Jay on the other. And he's like looking and he's like making a choice. He's like, he's got the spike ready. He's like, do I go over and spike Sammy or like, do I go do it to Jay? And he's like undecided. And as soon as like, oh, he's stepping towards Jay, he's stepping towards Jay. Boom, he gets interrupted by Riddle, like with a knee to the face, I think, or something like that. Gets interrupted. So then it prolongs that, but we're like, oh my gosh. And then it gets to the point where I'm pretty sure uh, Solo spikes KO, takes him out after KO stunners Jimmy and he's out the ring. So he doesn't, so Jimmy doesn't know what's going on right now. He just got stunned. He's taking a nice nap outside the ring. Anyway, as soon as Solo spikes KO, 
Solo just reaches backwards and grabs Jay by the back of the neck. And he's like, he's, he's about to spike him. He's got the spike ready. And people's going crazy. Like, we're like, oh my gosh. Is it going to happen? And Jay's yelling at Solo. He's like, what are you doing? You going to hit me? You going to hit me? I'm your brother. He's not your brother. But you going to hit me? So that was going crazy. I didn't expect the uh, bloodline to win, but it makes sense, right? For the story they want to they that they want to tell with the bloodline, because okay, right? There's nothing on the line for the baby faces. The titles aren't on the line. There's not some like stipulation that they have to win. So it makes sense that they didn't win because they want to reinforce the idea of. Solo's the one getting this job done. He's the one getting the job done. He got he he beat him. He got the pin, and he's the one that won the match. After he tagged himself in, he uh, spiked Riddle. After Jay was out, but yeah, so they want Solo to be the one to win the match, to keep up the appearance of. He's the one, he's the problem solver, he's the one getting the jobs done. But it's also like massive tension, like even after the match. So like the, the spike didn't happen, but there's so much tension in the air between Solo and Jay. And then like Jimmy comes in all smiling, he doesn't, he didn't see it, he doesn't know what's happening. And that's what uh calms Solo down for a little bit. Right, just uh, seeing the J Jimmy there, just willy nilly, just grinning at the win. Right, they got the job done. Like, I know they like they wrote wrote it like that, but just the Jimmy being so oblivious right there was great. Just to see the tent, like Jimmy in the middle, and the tension rising on both sides of on his left and right. It was it was great storytelling. Even though I wanted a turn, so I was, I was a little bit disappointed. But looking back on it, after it being 5 p.m. on Sunday, the day after, looking back on it, right? But yeah, everything up till now was great. Even the main event, which I think maybe could have been switched with Priest and Bunny. But this was still good too. I loved how the pop between I love the pop for Cody Rhodes. There was even like a there was a Suplex City chant because Puerto Rico wanted some Suplex City, you know. But uh, yeah, when Cody came out or when Brock came out, he was walking around on the outside, and then Cody jumped him. Loved every second of it. I wish it could have went on a little bit more too. Because the story of Cody just getting decimated Raw after Mania by Brock. Like got the beats put on him. To where the story was he wasn't medically cleared for a few weeks after that. And just this rising pent up frustration of Cody not being able to get this get back. Because every time... They have a face-off or confrontation. He gets held back by 30, 40 just uh, security guards. So he's just that frustration is just building and building, and building, and he's finally able to unleash it. He jumps Brock, hits him with the chair or with the stair still steps three times. Starts beating him with the chair. It was great. Gets in the ring, and then started a little bit of offense, and then this is where the, the table started to turn. Brock started to dominate, right? Started with, started with the suplex, suplex, suplex. But then it started to get interesting again. Because it was a little bit like, oh no. All right, here we go. Because I knew Cody was going to win. Because he needs to win. But, uh, yeah. This is where he goes for another suplex on Cody. And... Cody ends up yanking off the top, the turnbuckle padding on one of the turnbuckles. 
getting suplexed, just yanks it off and it goes flying into the crowd. And then the turnbuckle gets exposed. <laughs> now, it had to be planned because Brock walked over to it and saw it. I don't know if he planned it to be as bloody as it was, right? Because I don't think it was a, a blade, but okay. Anyways, Rhodey's like, Cody's in the corner, reverses it, and Brock goes temple first into the turnbuckle, the metal turnbuckle. He gets both busted open. Busted open. I mean, he's gone. It's everywhere. It's all over the mat. A full face paint of all blood. The blood's all over Cody's chest. All under his side, ar underarm, armpit, from doing a crossroads. It's everywhere. So that's why I think he didn't plan it to be as big of a gash or just a bleeding cut as it was. But either way, it made it so much better. I loved it. Every second of it. And it gets to the point where Cody starts going on the offensive, starts hitting a, he hit an RKO, hit a cutter, hit a Cody kick or whatever. And then Brock, the, the ending of the match was a little, little, mm, raise an eyebrow, right? Mm -hmm. Raise an eyebrow on the end of the match. So what Brock uh, puts the Kimura lock on Cody, just jumps up, puts it in the Kimura. And he's laying down, bloody face. It was a great picture, but um, so that happens, and I don't know. I just don't. I don't know how I feel about the ending because it was a roll up. Like it was a. He obviously is too small to pick him up and do the usual spot of picking him up and throwing him down like a Roman Reigns would do. So what they did was he just used leverage and rolled Brock up for a 1-2-3 and then rolled out the ring and ran up the ramp. So I don't know how I feel about the ending, but I hope we never see it again. I hope we never see this Brock Cody thing again. Not unless they start a whole new feud later down the line because I don't think they're going to be able to pull this, pull this out the bag again, right? This was like a one and done. We need to move on. We need like a Cody versus Finn Balor rivalry. Right? Like we need like a maybe Cody advancing in the Raw tournament. And then in the, in the semifinals of the Raw tournament. Finn attacks Cody and costs him the match. And that starts a feud between them two. Please, I'd rather do that. Let's drop the Brock Lesnar Cody thing. It was cool. I don't think there's a better way to book it, is what I'm saying. Like, you won't be able to get a repeat performance. It's just going to disappoint if you do it again. So, I didn't expect this entire rivalry to, like, have a roll up pin in it or finish in it, but it is what it is. Overall, I enjoyed the hell out of it. The entire pay per view. The crowd was insane and lively the entire show, which had me hype, right? It wasn't a dead crowd to where I'm just like exhausted myself watching. But yeah, that's my thoughts, opinions, and reaction review, all the other good stuff to WWE Backlash 2023. Uh, and if you enjoyed, Make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, because it all helps out the channel. And I'll catch you guys next time with more content. Until then, I'll see you then. Goodbye.